The RX 6500 XT is newer. It supports ray tracing, and on paper, it should easily beat the older GTX 1660 Super, right? Well, not exactly. In fact, depending on your setup, the older 1660 Super might be the smarter choice, even in 2025. Let's break it all down. Gaming performance, PCIe limitations, feature support, and which one actually gives you more for your money. Let's start with the basics. The GTX 1660 Super launched in 2019, based on NVIDIA's Turing architecture, but without ray tracing or DLSS. The RX 6500 XT came out later in 2022 using AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. It does support ray tracing and even has slightly lower power draw. But here's the catch, the 6500 XT only has 4GB of VRAM on a 64-bit bus, and it runs on just 4 PCIe lanes. That matters, that's a lot, especially if you're using an older motherboard. Meanwhile, the 1660 Super comes with 6GB of VRAM, a full 192-bit memory bus, and no PCIe bottleneck, even on PCIe 3.0 systems. Now, let's talk performance. Real-world gaming, 1080p settings. In Call of Duty Warzone, the GTX 1660 Super averages around 75 to 80 FPS on high settings. The RX 6500 XT, on the same settings, sits closer to 60 FPS, and in heavy moments it can dip below that. Cyberpunk is brutal on both cards, but the 1660 Super manages around 60 FPS on medium settings, which is playable. The RX 6500 XT really struggles here, averaging just 30 FPS with frequent stutters in dense areas. In Fortnite, both cards crush it. The GTX 1660 Super can go well above 200 FPS, making it perfect for competitive play. The RX 6500 XT also delivers high frame rates, around 200 FPS in performance mode depending on the scene. In GTA 5 at high settings, both cards can hit over 100 FPS. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the GTX 1660 Super averages around 60 to 70 FPS on high settings. The RX 6500 XT sits closer to 45 to 50 FPS. So across the board, the GTX 1660 Super leads by 15 to 25% in most modern games. And in demanding titles like Cyberpunk or Horizon, that gap becomes even more noticeable. Here's one of the biggest reasons the RX 6500 XT underperforms in many builds, the PCIe bottleneck. Unlike most modern GPUs that use a full X16 interface, the 6500 XT is limited to just X4 lanes, even though it uses the PCIe 4.0 standard. Now, if you're on a PCIe 4.0 motherboard, that's not a huge issue. But if you're using an older system, like most budget gamers still do, you're running PCIe 3.0. And because of this in some games, the performance drop can be as high as 10 to 20%. Meanwhile, the GTX 1660 Super uses a full PCIe 3.0 by 16 interface. No bottlenecks, no surprises. It just works, even on older platforms. In terms of power, the RX 6500 XT is more efficient. It draws around 100 watts, while the 1660 Super pulls about 125 watts. That said, both cards are easy to run on a basic 450 to 500 watt power supply. No big difference there. Now for the final piece, pricing. In the used market, both of these cards usually sell between $90 and $130, depending on condition and region. But here's the thing, for around the same price, the GTX 1660 Super almost always gives you better performance, more VRAM, and fewer limitations. The RX 6500 XT is newer, yes, but it's held back by PCIe bottlenecks, only 4GB of VRAM, and a lack of proper encoding support. So, if you're gaming at 1080p and want the best all-around experience for your money in 2025, go with the GTX 1660 Super. It's simply the more reliable and capable GPU in this matchup. Newer doesn't always mean better, and this battle proves it.